Is it? I mean, is it working? Yeah, no, it's fine. But... Just let me know if you want another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe if uh, we could start off uh, a little bit, just background, you know, where sure. you're born, um, up until where you went to school and university, and how, uh, maybe also how you got involved in, in South African politics. Well, my, my parents are both South Africans. My, um, uh, my father was um, Jewish South African, um, but he went into, he went into the church. To the, he became an Anglican bishop. Um, his mother had come from Poland, and then um, they had left because of the anti-Semitism in Poland, come to Britain, and her husband, whose name was Adolf, um, uh, had TB. And then they, um, this is his grandmother, and then they, uh, so they went to South Africa because there was free passage for white people. It was in 1902. So they ended up in South Africa. He worked in uh, selling alcohol, basically running a bottle store, and then he had, had too much conscience about it. So he gave that up and he became a photographer. Um, and his daughter, um, uh, who was this, whose name was Lily, um, uh, and she was, the family were ardent Zionists as well. Um, and then, um, and she then married outside the faith. She married a Welshman who was a motor racing driver. And, and my father was the, the son of one of the, one of the three sons of, of that uh, marriage. The motor racing driver, he had a bad accident and then he died of, it pierced his lung and he died of lung cancer um, when my father was a child. So he was raised as a, as a Jewish, secular Jewish South African. And then when he was in his 20s, he got converted and he became um, uh, an evangelical Anglican. And, um, and he married my mother, who was of Danish, South African um, origin. And um, so then uh, they were studying in England just for, for about, I think for about, they were here for a total of eight years. So I was born here, actually in London. Um, but I was at the age of one and a half, I, they returned to South Africa. So uh, um, that's, uh, then we, we were in initially in, in a place called Deep River. Um, and uh, it was the time of the forced removals of, you know, the group areas act affected different places in, at different times. So some of the, remo the removals in group areas in Deep River had happened in, in 1961, 62, so around about then. So that was what my father had to, to deal with. He had been involved in kind of, United Party politics when he was a teenager um, on the sort of on the the liberal wing of the United Party um, and um, he had supported Helen Sussman as well so that's where he had come from but the experience of Deep River I think was quite politicizing for for him because he saw the force removals at first hand so we were kind of I grew up with this idea that Apartheid was a you know really bad thing, and and you know look what happened to this one and that one and that one, and they were our church people kind of thing. Um, so that was my my initial in a vague kind of way. My initial politics came from my family, and my father also. He he was sort of because he had grown up with anti-Semitism, was also kind of fiercely against any racism, um, and. Uh, um, that was also part of, you know, that was also part of my, I guess, part of my... Um, I mean, I wasn't really involved in, in politics. Um, in my final year at school, I was at, I finished, I was at school at Rondebosch, Bishop of Port Elizabeth. I moved up with them and, and had the last couple of years at Gray in PE, Gray High School in PE. And um, in my final year, it was the 1977 election. And... Um, I was a big fan of Fancel Slubbert, so I supported the losing bid of whoever their candidate, I can't even remember his name, in uh, you know, handing out pamphlets and going door to door um, in, that, in that election campaign. So that was my first kind of foray into, into politics. And then I was a Rotary Exchange student in Texas, in, in a place called St. Marcus in Texas. So... Um, you know, and, and I was 17 at the time, and the rules of Rotary did not appeal to me. So I was quite, I guess, quite rebellious, on, and I was just broken away from Christianity as well. And um, 
So, you know, that was where I got into the kind of the butt end of, of what I guess was the residues of the hippie ethos. Um, and on top of that, um, the issue of South Africa always came up. And there was another exchange student whose name was Trixie. And she was, she was, a, she was fervently pro everything South Africa. And she saw her role as representing the country um, in, in every way that she could. She never sort of took off her, we had these green blazers that looked like Springbok blazers and she wore a green skirt as well. And I looked rather different. And, 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 and we, we just clashed. Anyway, so what happened was I had to make speeches and, you know, book about my country. And so I would always bring in apartheid and, you know, I would um, bring in that Nelson Mandela was in jail and, you know, I didn't know much about the situation there. But anyway, what happened was she then reported me and the thing got in Die Burger and it got in oh, no, Die Oosterlich and then it got in the Sunday Times and there was a big, big issue. Um, Sunday Times, we had a headline, Bishop's son in Rotary Storm and then to call me home and then Tutu, Bishop Tutu um, wrote to me to say, you know, don't back down. Um, and anyway, I was quite fortunate because they were going to send me home and then the one of the newspapers called the head of the world head president of Rotary and see, you know, that this poor South African is being sent home for speaking his views and this kind of thing. And then um, he said, no, on no account is that going to happen. So I was kind of saved and, you know, um, the people in Texas were a bit bemused about, about all this. So that was really my, my sort of politicizing thing. It was, you know, it was a bit kind of egotistical in a way because it was like, I'd made this little stand and then there'd been this big hoo-ha about it and I'd been the center of attention kind of thing. Anyway, so uh, I'd, I was interested at that stage in doing drama, but my brother who was um, by that stage at work, he, had, he, he was uh, two years older than me, uh, was at university and he wrote to me and he said, you know, you're going to get to the end of your life and you're going to say, what have I done? I've entertained a few people. Come home and join the struggle. And, that, and because of my experience, that appealed to me. So I went back to, to UCT and you know, got involved in, in the student politics at that, at that time. This was now the, end, you know, the, end, the late, right at the end of the 70s.